My amplified unit, salud! It's time to wake up, get up, and get amplified! Get those delts bulging, the biceps crushing, the triceps rocking. It's time to snap simpletons in half. And in this bonus amplification, this impromptu vid, we're going to get to the SmackDown and Rampage ratings from this past Friday night. Because of the holiday, the Raw ratings is pushed back, um, but BC will be on top of that as well. But the Rampage and SmackDown ratings, we're going to get to those. One company stayed pretty consistent. Another company with an asterisk, they were on several hours before their normal time slot, but wow, it is something we used to joke about as we tried to help this company uh, be better, get better. And unfortunately, uh, now when you have a simple thing like a, a time slot change and you're already not doing that well viewership wise, that combination is a perfect storm for what happened with AEW this past Friday night. And it's a. Uh, it's something we have to talk about. We'll also discuss, as I said, the SmackDown rating. Also did a drop, but remained consistent. And we'll go over the highs and lows of both shows. We're also going, going to talk the uh, Ronda Rousey's Shayna Baszler tag team title situation for Mania. There's a little bit of, I guess, breaking news on that. Something we've been discussing, and we kind of have a bit of a confirmation on it now. Um, so we'll get to that as well. As it pertains to Ronda, Baszler, and some titles that are going to be switching hands at WrestleMania. I have to start out um, with a big story, literally and figuratively. And it's it's interesting. It's amazing what 24 Hours could do. Because just yesterday during the live stream, the Monday Night Raw review live stream, I put it up with about 17 minutes of notice. Thankfully, I had hundreds of you guys live with BC still, even on 17 minutes of notice. And uh, thankfully, when we were done, the tube decided to put it into the algorithm rotation. Once we were done being live, like they usually do, um, kind of uh, counterproductive, right? It's ass backwards. But it eventually made its way into the algorithm. Thousands of you guys were able to catch that thus far. But if you watched it live, that live stream that we put together yesterday, or you watched it afterwards... You heard several times BC and the unit in Super Chats or just in the chat talking about Omos and Brock Lesnar for Mania. Now, no matter what BC was talking about, I kept seeing that being talked about in the chat. And several times during Super Chats, it was asked of BC what my thoughts were. And I truly believe that it was just stemming from Omos's interview recently where he said he would like to take on Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. I truly just chalked it up to that is what all the chatter is about. That's why a lot of you guys are asking BC my thoughts on it. And I told you guys my honest thought right from the beginning, which is the majority of us, by the way, because you guys told me the same thing in that live stream. My amp unit spoke up and spoke loud. No, nobody needs to or wants to see Omos versus Brock Lesnar. Now, of course, there's exceptions, right? This is where people, you can't say nobody because I'm down for it, BC. Okay. All right. Let me generalize a little bit here when I say nobody, all right? <laughs> Obviously, there's some exceptions. Some people have no problem seeing Omos and Brock, but I can easily speak for the majority when I say that that is not the match that is best suited for Brock Lesnar, and it's not even best suited for Omos. This is not a situation where like LA Knight can go into the Rumble, lose to Bray Wyatt, and be completely fine. No harm, no foul. In fact, LA Knight is going to find victory in defeat. Just being in that huge story with Bray Wyatt, uh, LA Knight loses nothing from that loss at Royal Rumble. That is the case with LA Knight. He lost nothing. He gained victory in defeat. No harm, no foul. When he comes back, I expect big things. With Omos, this makes absolute zero sense at all you haven't even built this guy correctly yet and he's going to be thrusted in there with Brock Lesnar so Omos you're doing this guy no favors he's going to get what some attention some spotlight for a couple of weeks get flattened by Brock Lesnar and then go right back into the hole of, of obscurity is what you're telling us the only other way you could go is that Omos somehow defeats Brock Lesnar 
And please tell me nobody is seriously considering that. Again, you have to build the motherfucker up for us to believe it. You can't say, well, BC, that's that's going to be the building process. He's going to demolish Brock, and that's what's going to make heads turn and go, yep, he's the real deal. You've already fucked him up for two years. You have not built him up to be the monster that can take out Brock. You're going to have to build him up to that level and then have that giant collision and hope by the time that you do, we care about it. So that was my general response to everybody asking me in that stream yesterday. Absolutely not. And judging by the majority of you guys, you said absolutely not. Now that was just on Omas, just saying that in an interview. Now, oh, how the tides have, have it turned. Because now we're getting confirmation. Not that the match is confirmed yet, but confirmation that that is exactly where WWE is headed. They're going to Brock Lesnar versus Omos for WrestleMania. I can't say that. I grew up, I grew up during the, uh, the era where Vince McMahon was screaming that word. So let, let me do it justice. Ha! WrestleMania! There you go. There's a little Vince. Uh, any old schoolers, man, you remember that. Uh, that was the intro of every WrestleMania, late 80s into the 90s. It's the spectacle! It's the world colliding! It's WrestleMania! Vince would dig deep back in the day, man. But anyway, at WrestleMania, Brock versus Omos, I can't even, I can't even fathom that, that somebody would think that that's a match that people, the majority, would want to see. I can't fathom that somebody within WWE would think that that's best for Omos and best for Brock Lesnar. I can't fathom that somebody would actually think that's best and then that somebody else, whether it's a VKM or an HHH, would actually approve. Or was it a VKM decision? And this is what I mean, guys. This just seems to be C like it's VKM. Which is why I say I just refuse to believe that he's totally not in anything to do with creative. Because you see and you hear boneheaded decisions like this. And you hope it's not true. BC is still hoping that Sami Zayn is not going to be added to Cody and Roman. And I'm loving the Sami Zayn bloodline storyline. I'm okay with them running it back. Roman versus Sammy again in the future. And Cody and Roman intrigues me to no end one-on-one -on -one at Mania. And if you want to have Sammy versus Roman and Cody versus Roman both matches at WrestleMania, because there's two different nights, put Roman in two separate matches. Sammy Inc., I'm fine with it. But there's no way we should be having a triple threat and diluting the waters again. We do this all the fucking time. Whether it's an Orton, Daniel Bryan, Batista situation, or a fucking uh, Charlotte, Becky, Ronda situation, or a Brian Danielson, Edge, Roman situation. We've seen all of this at WrestleMania time and time again. Why do we always have to take the mega one-on-one -on -one match and add somebody else just because there's a big-time player and they have nothing to do with it? They have nothing to do with with the actual one-on-one -on -one with Cody and Roman in this situation, Sammy's, Sammy's whole story with the bloodline is totally separate. Keep it that way. But because WWE doesn't know how to utilize the third wheel, they literally add them as a third wheel and it becomes a triple threat circus schmaz. And the matches we should be getting, we, we don't get one-on-one. -on -one. And the biggest stage of them all, it turns into a circus. I'm still hoping that we don't have Sami Zayn added to Cody and Roman. Keep those stories separate. There's no need, because I know how this will work out, man. Co the two faces will be taken on each other for the majority of the match. Cody versus fucking Ro uh, Sammy, and Roman will be hanging out with Paul outside for like five to ten minutes. Half of it, he'll be injured or hurt. The other half, he'll be playing it strategic. Come on, man. You're diluting Cody and Roman at that point. You're even diluting Sammy and, and Roman. Separate that. Keep them separate. Those storylines are great, and they're great on their own. WrestleMania is a two-night event. Don't muddy the waters. I say the same for the females, by the way. Asuka. Kana Asuka. Asuka with the Kana personality versus Bianca Belair. That is a one-on-one -on -one match that is sitting in their lap. You just got to put the cherry on top, which is just letting the cooks cook. Let them go in there, do their thing, receive their flowers, and we all 
show them their love and all the accolades that they've accomplished in that one match alone. We will shower them with such flowers and love, but you just got to let the cooks cook and do what they do. You don't have to add Raquel Rodriguez into the match. And they're still a part of BC knowing that VKM is in that company. Never truly left. I don't care if you call him in creative or not. He's in that company. He's high on Raquel. I just don't put it past him that he's not going to at some point within the next two weeks throw Raquel Rodriguez into that Kana Asuka versus Belair match. And I hope that does not happen. There's no fucking reason at all. She is a SmackDown talent. She did not win the chamber. You do not add her to a Raw title match. You just don't do it. You want to muddy the waters with Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair? Have at it. I don't care about that fucking match. It's odd that Rhea is taking on Charlotte, to be honest with you. And I don't think it does fucking Rhea or Charlotte any fucking favors. Not at all. So you can muddy those waters. Don't touch Kana Asuka versus Belair. Don't touch Cody versus Roman. So my point is, I don't put it past the old bastard in Stanford, Connecticut, Vincent Kennedy McMahon, and I wouldn't put it past that he's the one behind this match. It could be HHH. I don't give him the whole world just because he replaced McMahon. You know, I'm one of the very few uh, in this industry that holds Triple H accountable, Paul Levesque, for his rights. We give him his applause for his wrongs and his botches. We rip it apart and it's all justified. He doesn't get a mulligan or a free pass just because he's a little better than Vince. So if we find out it's his decision, yeah, we'll rip it apart. It seems to me like this is VKM. He likes to have the big dude and the big dude, even though even if it's going to be an absolute fucking snore fest or a botch fest or just a shit fest, uh, he'll put it together because it's the giant Omas and the giant, the, the beast, Brock Lesnar. Put him in there. It's going to, it's going to captivate. I don't know, Vince. Shut up, you doofus son-in-law. You'll join my idiotic daughter in the unemployment line. You know what I mean? You never know, bro. <laughs> we laugh. We, co- we use some comedy, right? We entertain. You know, we're, we're all having a laugh. But it's all fun and games until you really see Brock Lesnar and Omos at WrestleMania. So to put a cherry on top of this conversation, yesterday when we were talking about it, BC was talking to you guys like this was just a, this is just Omos talking about what he would like in the future. Just like Charlotte is saying she wants to face Rhea Ripley in the main event of WrestleMania of one of the nights. And I'm like, that's, that, that's batshit, b- ballistically stupid. No, you did the fucking Asuka versus Belair. If you're going to throw a women's match would be way before Rhea and Charlotte, obviously. So that, that that's none of those matches should be in the main event. Let's be honest. You know we're all down with the females being in there, but none of those matches constitute for a main event. So you know I chalked it up as just chatter. Okay, Omas wants Brock. That's funny. You know he's having a laugh. Never would anybody really fucking check that off as a match for Mania. But no. Here we are just 24 hours later, not even, and, and, and we're receiving word that that's the direction that, that WWE is going in. It's going to be Bobby Lashley and Wyatt, which is so, so strange to me. When you think of possible opponents for Bray Wyatt, never in a millionaires would be, and this is a pro Bray channel. We love Bray Wyatt, Wyndham Rotunda on this channel, most of us. If you're part of the channel and you don't, man, it's got to be rough for you because BC speaks so highly of Bray Wyatt, Wyndham Rotunda. Um... And, and 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 Bobby Lashley would be one of the last people I would think to face Bray at Mania. I don't know what this does for Bray. I don't know what it does for Bobby Lashley for sure. I, I just don't understand that match. And I really don't understand just throwing Omos to Brock Lesnar because you don't have anything for either guy. What the fuck are you going to do? You're just going to do your power moves. Brock's going to beat him quick. Or you just do, you do something for shock value, which is not... The, the right type of shock. It's the fucking botch type of shock. And you have Omos somehow defeat Brock. It, would it even matter? If Brock and Omos is made official for Mania, which it looks like that's what WWE is going to make within the next week or two, a couple of weeks. If that's the case, then Brock Lesnar has lost the majority of the stock that made him feel so special. You guys remember when Brock would show up, and then he'd leave for several months, but every time he showed up, you knew shit was going to hit the, the, the fan, right? The, the ceiling was about to fucking explode because you knew Brock Lesnar at any moment can take out the locker room. Nowadays, Farmer Brock comes out smiling, 
And you just know that this is going to be fucking pretty silly. This is going to be goofy. His heart is mine. Nothing's into it anymore. Low blow to Bobby Lashley at the last pay-per-view this past weekend at Elimination Chamber. And he just gets DQ'd. And then he just throws a fit and he takes off. It's the same ending that happened at the Royal Rumble a month ago. He loses really quickly in the Rumble. He doesn't really give a fuck. He throws a temper tantrum and then he leaves. I mean, are we just going to do this nonstop? Does Omos beat him at WrestleMania? And then he throws a temper tantrum, uh, annihilates Omos, beats up MVP maybe, maybe Shelton, maybe Cedric, right? Because that'll be the storyline too, by the way. Brock will just either take out Cedric and Shelton because they're paid by MVP. And then maybe even MVP will get F5 17 times. And that'll be the story. And then we'll get to Mania and something stupid will happen within five minutes because the match will be no more than five minutes, nor should it be. I mean, I'm ironing out every possibility and none of them are leading to the right type of fucking direction we want to be on, right? The road to WrestleMania is one thing. But if you're going toward Omos and Brock, then you've taken a draft bad detour and that detour is going to lead to a one-way fucking end right you ever see those fucking streets it's a one-way which means you can go there but there's no fucking there's no destination you ain't getting through you're gonna have to eventually turn around or you just go fucking a buck 80 into a fucking telephone pole well that's what you're telling us with omas and brock i don't see any possible scenario where this goes out without a hitch bobby will have to once again be the fucking heel or bobby but bobby versus bray bobby will turn into the heel i'm guessing bray will get fucking cheered bobby would fucking probably rejoin bray's smackdown too by the way bobby's raw that neither of them have titles, so I don't even know how that... Bray said, I want the winner of Brock and Bobby, but neither of them are even SmackDown, so I don't understand how... I got two fucking matches right now that make no sense to BC. Sticking with Brock and Omos, that's all that would happen. Omos, I don't know why I put Bobby in there, because it's all her business at the end of the day, and you could see her business reform with Omos, with Bobby. But Omos is just going to have MVP just put his little cronies in the way, and then Brock will run through them... And that'll lead up to the fucking uh, the, the Mania match. And I just don't understand uh, what they're doing. There's some really intriguing matches being formed for WWE WrestleMania 39 in Hollywood. And some of them, if they leave it and they don't add people, they're going to be really fucking special. And then there's other matches where you clearly see they're just throwing shit at the wall and seeing where the fucking piece of baloney fucking hits, right? They're putting a bunch of names and they're throwing baloney and they're just like, oh, Bobby Lashley, let's try this again. Ooh, Bray Wyatt? All right, let's do that. Throw it again, it's Omos. Throw it again, it's fucking Brock Lesnar. And they're like, well, wait, Brock versus Omos doesn't work. And they're like, well, the baloney landed on it, so we might as well just do it. Vince loves Big Brute versus Big Brute. Or again, is it just VKM's idea in the first place? You know what I mean? This is just what he wants. But I, I don't understand where people think that this... And, and I haven't... Th th I don't think there's many people that are going to look forward to this fucking match. But again, to revisit something I said two minutes ago, this is going to devalue Brock Lesnar. And that's the saddest part in all that. Omos has not even been built up yet. And it's going to take way more than a Brock Lesnar match at Mania to build this guy up and make people give a fuck. And that's the problem. So for Omos, that's what I mean. This is not going to have the desired result that some people think it would. And for Brock, it's going to devalue this motherfucker so much. As I said a few minutes ago, you remember when he used to always come back, even if he took off, took off for five, six months at a time. Every time he came back, there was a special feel, a special vibe, right? The atmosphere, the mood, everything changed. And you knew Brock meant business and, and shit was going to be fun. Now when Brock comes back, I don't have that same feeling. And, and I like Brock. I always did anyway. He always brought that, even as a part-timer, he always brought that believability, that real-life feel that people are going to get fucked up. But without with Brock these days, Just Farmer Brock coming back, smiling all the time, doesn't even give a fuck if he wins anymore. Rumble, he, he's eliminated so fast. Five, less than five-minute match with Bobby, and he just fucking kicks him in the balls, gets DQ'd just so he can hit the showers, go home to his fucking cows back in Canada. I don't fucking understand um, how this is going to make Brock Lesnar special. Uh, I, I, I mean, if this happens, I'm gonna. This is what I'm gonna end the conversation with. This cherry on top, right now. I'm gonna put the fucking the bow in the ribbon on this present for you guys. All right. If this match is confirmed and happens, 
this might be that final fucking nail for Brock Lesnar and the value, the worth that he has for WWE. This might be it. I mean, how far uh, the mighty have fallen at that point. I, I mean, you look at Brock Lesnar's WrestleMania. I mean, taking the undefeated, the WrestleMania undefeated streak from the Undertaker, many matches for the title with Roman Reigns, all of the big matches and moments for Brock. And here we are in 2023, WrestleMania 39, Hollywood, and it's Brock Lesnar versus versus Omos. Uh, I, I don't even know what we're doing. And guys, I, I just because I can go on another hour with that. I'm befuddled by this news, but that's the, the word that we're getting within the last couple of hours. Now, sticking with WrestleMania, guys, a little slightly different turn we're going to take, and that's over to the female side of things. Ronda Rousey, Shayna Baszler. BC has been telling you um, for months that that team was forming. They were doing it at live events to shake off any rust, try some new stuff, see what works, see what doesn't, drop what doesn't work, do more of what does work. So Ronda and Baszler were doing a lot of live events together in 20, uh, tw- yeah, end of 2022, right? Just, uh, yeah, just doing a lot of training together and dark matches, I should say, more than anything. So they were doing a lot of that. And, and that's while Ronda was even champion, by the way. And Shayna was on TV getting fruit roll-ups in, in two minutes. Getting fruit roll up in two minutes. Uh, they were also having tag matches. So I told you guys they were grooming them, and it's not just to throw them in a team. They're obviously going to be tag champions sooner rather than later when they finally become a team on TV. Well, they are now. That's pretty evident. They're going to run through everybody, and we expect WrestleMania. They're going to capture those titles. BC's been telling you that. Now we're hearing confirmation, just like we did Brock Lesnar Omos situation, where they're putting Brock and Omos onto this road to WrestleMania together. Now we're hearing confirmation that that's exactly where they're going with Ronda and Baszler again. BC pretty much, not pretty, I did. I told you guys that's what's that's what's being ironed out in front of us. Now the rest of the wrestling world is just starting to uh, come across this info. Again, I just use common sense and logic, but everybody else now is hearing chatter within the walls of WWE and that's what they're hearing. Everything BC has told you for months now. Ronda and Baszler going for the tag titles and winning those some bitches at WrestleMania. So now we ask the question. Now that we know, now the rest of the the rest of the wrestling world is now in on this, and they all understand that this is where we're going. Ronda and Shane are going to win the tag titles. Now we say, or yeah, at least we play the game. How do we get there, right? Because right now you cannot have Shayna and Ronda versus Damage Controls, EO and Dakota. That's not just heel versus heel, but that's a match that nobody's going to give a fuck about. Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler have been brutally misbooked since both have debuted on the roster. And Dakota and Io, even though Dakota is really good, Io is one of the best female wrestlers in the world. Still to this day, I feel that way. There's no care with, even with tag titles, there's no care when they come through the curtain. Damage control as a group has been misbooked. So now you just have... The entire entity of damage control and Shayna and Ronda all in one match and every single one of them have been misbooked. Nobody's going to care about that. On top of that, it's all heels versus all heels. It's it's a recipe for disaster. There's no way you can do that. You're going to have to have the titles on faces going into Mania. And that's how, unfortunately, you're going to have to play a little game of hot potato with the titles, right? I get them from you. Four weeks from then, you get, uh, we'll give them to Ronda and Shayna. So it's going to be a pass-along torch type situation. I hate those. But it's the only game you can play in this situation. If what we're hearing is now being confirmed, Shayna... And Ronda going for the tag titles and getting them at Mania. You got to do it the right way. It's got to be faces somehow. Well, isn't it ironic? Lita just returned to WWE this past Raw and joined forces with Becky. And next Monday, this upcoming Monday, I should say, you're going to get that title match. This is something you easily could have done at Mania. But no, there's got to be a reason. Are they going to give these titles to Lita and Becky and then Shayna and Ronda Go for Lita and Becky's titles, and that would be a massive tag team title match for WrestleMania. And it would give Becky something, obviously. Um, Lita would add so much to that match, and it makes sense for Ronda and Baszler if they're going to get it. I mean, that's people would then care about the match. Um, So that would be absolutely huge if they went that way. 
Uh, we hear stories that Trish Stratus was supposed to be in Canada last week in New York, first of all, then in Canada, and she never appeared. But reputable sources are still saying that Trish is going to be inv involved in Mania. Are they going to do Trish Stratus Bailey one on one if this tag team scenario unfolds? Lita and Becky versus Ronda Shayna for the titles at Mania. Then would you do Trish Bailey one on one? If Lita and Becky do not get the titles and Bailey interferes or something and there's damage being put on Lita and Becky, does Trish return this Monday and that sets up a six-woman tag for Mania? Again, the problem will still lie. Who does Ronda and Shayna take the tag titles from at Mania? You will still have damage control as your champs with nobody to take it from them with four weeks at that point till Mania from Monday. So I hope you guys are keeping track. How you get to a destination means everything. You can have a really shitty journey and it's going to leave a bad taste in your mouth or you can have a real fun experience. You can have an adventure to get to your destination and you'll remember that journey for a lifetime. The journey will be more important to you than the actual destination when you look back at it. How you get to a destination, the journey of, to the destination matters just as much as that destination. And you got to have the right type of journey, man. I'm okay with Rhonda and Baszler finding themselves and trying to see what they have together. Maybe this will light a fire under, under their asses and WWE management to utilize them better. But to get to that point, to have Rhonda and Baszler at Mania and collecting titles, you got to do this correctly. Ain't nobody going to give a fuck if they take them from EO and Dakota, who I love both of them. But they could not be any more irrelevant because they're in a division that is non-existent. And what good is being champions of a non-existent division? It sounds to me like you have a whole hell of a lot of nothing. So, that's the talk on that, guys. Ronda and Baszler looks to be confirmed to get tag titles at Mania. Exactly what BC has been telling you about. That one doesn't shock me. How we get there means everything. Brock and Omos being confirmed for Mania, which is the road that the the route the road and the route that they're going. That shocks me. That absolutely is because I can't believe somebody would make that fucking decision and another person would approve it, or is this just one dude <clears throat> VKM who's fucking making the decision and approving it himself? Remains to be seen, but a lot of man, there's a lot of good talk we've been having about WrestleMania. That's the good news. Unfortunately, this is one of those vids where we got to oh, we're looking at a few matches that just uh, uh, either don't make sense or when it's all said and done, will not make sense. And we're hoping that WWE understands the concerns and makes it make sense, make it make sense to them, to us, to the individuals involved. That would be great. And guys, before we take off, I'm going to want to uh, well, I'd like to talk about bold shows, man. I, I it's sad to talk about Rampage, to be honest with you, but I do want to talk about both shows, uh, SmackDown and Rampage from this past Friday, both their ratings. I'll start with SmackDown. SmackDown pulled a 2.38, that is 2,383,000 viewers, down slightly from their just over 2.4 from last week, but remaining consistent uh, with a 0.58 in the 18 to 49 demo, 0.58 remaining by large the best wrestling show in terms of the key demo, which is 18 to 49.58. And again, they hovered right at around that 2.4 mark, 2.38 for SmackDown. Remaining, not just by opinion, just by, by numbers, by statistics, by metrics, SmackDown remains the hottest pro wrestling show right now. Um, going now rampage on the other hand usually on at 10 p.m. right after smackdown you would think that'd be a good lead-in for rampage smackdown which is getting 2.3 2.4 ratings over 2 million by large you would think that's a good lead-in for AEW, but lately they've been pulling in um just drastically shatteringly depressing numbers man uh 375,000 viewers just last week um, there's no real competition. There's no real big reasoning. It's just, it's just, it's just not a good show for the majority of the crowd. I'm talking the AEW audience, the, the, the tried and trues, which I always say the, the high end of the niche audience for AEW is 850 to 950,000 viewers. That's their niche. 950 being the, the peak. 
eight fifty to nine fifty is their is their highest end of their niche audience. Nine fifty is the peak. That's why I said dynamite this past Wednesday. Really depressing number because they pulled eight hundred twenty four thousand viewers. They came in underneath, not just their peak. They came in underneath the high end of their niche. They weren't even at eight fifty. 824 going backwards that's why tony khan finally said all right i gotta go to one of my tricks in the bag and he announced that he has an announcement on wednesday so tony khan usually does this when he sees things going too far backwards and he needs to try to pop a rating he's announcing in advance a big announcement for wednesday and that's going to hopefully bring back a hundred thousand viewers ish you know he's going to try to get back to that nine fifty thousand at least because people are going to want to hear what the announcement is so he's going to try to get the 950. Um, and, and you say, BC, that's what he's got to do, right? He's a pro- Yeah, but you, you, you hope that after all this time, he would have other ways to pop a rating and not just say, hey, I have a debut coming from a former WWE guy or I just have an announcement. There's got to be better ways to pop a rating. Like, I don't know, maybe put on a good wrestling show with really captivating storylines and characters we give a shit about. And then your own tried and true diehards will show up in droves. But instead, even their flagship Dynamite's going backwards, 824, and Tony Khan's going to try to stop the bleeding and, and switch it up with a big announcement, try to get the 950 back. But my point is, guys, on, on Rampage on Friday night, you think it's a good lead-in, over 2 million, almost 2.5 million viewers for SmackDown every week, and Rampage is pulling in three to 400,000 viewers, 375 last week. It's not good. And a lot of people say, well, it's their time slot, BC, to 10 p.m. on a Friday night. I mean, that's, that. you know, it's, it's you can't really fucking blame them for bad ratings. And I'm like, that's not true at all. They showed you before, when they first started, for instance, that they, they hit 7, 8, 900K. So where did over half the audience go? They must have decided somewhere down the line that the show's not good enough for their attention. The show is not good enough for their time at 10 o'clock on a Friday. That's the truth, right? There's no real competition at 10 o'clock at that point. You're just pulling in 375,000 viewers because you're not a good show. Now, some of you guys may like it. I always say this, right? I have likes that you guys might not like. You have likes that I think suck. That's our preferences. It doesn't... I go by numbers, metrics, statistics, right? Ratings. That tells us what the majority is saying, right? That's like doing a vote and seeing what is actually working and what is not. Rampage is not working. And I see some fans go, well, it sucks because it's actually a good show. I wish people would give it a chance, but it's not. It's th- If it was a really good show, people would be watching it consistently. That's the problem. You think it's a good show, and that's great. That's why you are one of the 375 at the time that drastically went down this week. We're going to get to that. But that's good for you. But the majority is saying, Yo, this show has to either be changed up or just get off the air. So for the people that say it's in in just a bad time slot, you got your wish this past week with a special little tag too, a slam dunk fest or some shit, man. Slam dunk rampage um, to help out the the NBA All-Star Weekend. And they went on at 7 o'clock. So you're going to try to lead into SmackDown, right? Can't do much worse than 375, you're thinking, right? You're going to have a big NBA audience that's going to tune in. Even if they leave the channel on and go get some fucking Doritos, go get a fucking coffee. But the channel is on. You're, you're going to be around the 375, you're thinking. Um, guys, they lost. Rampage lost 88,000 viewers this week from 375. Now you're thinking, how do you lose from 375? That's like the barrel, the, the, the low barrel, the bottom of the barrel of the diehard tried and trues. So you're not going to lose them. You're going to at least still be between 354. No, they lost 88. The, the better part of 100,000 viewers gone. Their rating this week for Rampage was a 200. 87,000 viewership. Their demo, like for instance, the, the 18 to 49 demo for SmackDown this week was a 0.58. The demo for Rampage, 0.07. 0.07 for 18 to 49 year olds. You know, the people that would, the people that, the, the key demo, this is what Tony Khan and Chris Jericho and everybody says, the key demo means the most. Well, you do not want to look at it this week. Now, again, you're going to say, okay, well, BC. Okay, so so again, you're going to split the fan base. Half of them are going to say seven's better than 10. Just watch what the rating is this week. It'll be over five. And then you have the people that go, well, no, everybody's used to it at 10. It's one special week. 
It's on at 7 o'clock. If it was consistent, then BC, yeah, it would be doing better. But it's one week, so of course it's going to go down. I'm fine with that. Let's actually, and I hate excuses, but let's just say you're right. Let's say because it's on at 7, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that the rating was going to take a hit. So let's say, okay, I acknowledge that. I confirm that you are absolutely right. Whether up or down, it's going to affect the rating being on at 7 when you're not usually on at 7. I totally agree with all of that. That is my point, though. My point from the very beginning, just like I said about Raw, which loses 250 to 300,000 viewers every year for the past seven years. I'll say the same thing for this show. When you get so low and you keep going so low every single, not so low, Sokoa, when you keep going so low every single week and you get lower and lower and lower, BC always says this, when you finally hit a roadblock, like, a, like the station needs you to switch time slots for like a week or two, or there is a special holiday or a special game is on, right? You did not leave yourself any room for error. You literally did not give yourself any wiggle room. Your shows were so bad for so long, or at least the people thought, the majority thought it was not worth tuning into, that you hit so low that now the station needs you to switch time slots and you have no wiggle room. You're going to hit so low that you should probably be taken off the fucking air at that point. That's my point. How did we get the 287,000 viewers for Rampage this week? If you're saying it's because of a 7 o'clock uh, NBA All-Star Game switch of a time slot. You're wrong. That's not how we got to 287. That's how we went from 375 to 287, you could say. But how did we get to 375 last week? How did we get to the 444 the week before? How were we at 800,000 a year ago when it started? How did we start this, this just regression downwards? And every single week, it just seems to get worse and worse. This number, how did we do that? Trends, numbers, right? The numbers, this turned into a trend. It was a downhill, downward trajectory, we call it, with the numbers and statistics, metrics. It's a downward trajectory. And that has been happening for months for AEW Rampage, to the point where finally they needed to switch time slots. Seven does seem like it's better than 10, but I understand it's a switch. So it's going to affect it, maybe even negatively for sure. Okay. But you gave yourself no wiggle room. So when you take the hit and you just hope that it's not like 100,000 viewers because that's not even a quarter. You don't even have four full quarters of 100,000, right? At least 400,000 viewers, you could split it into quarters, right? 100,000 viewers per quarter. So if you lose a quarter, you still got 300. You only pulled in 375 last week. You don't even got a full 100,000 that you can afford to lose right now. And they just went to 287. 287,000 viewers because they were already on a downward trajectory. If you take a fucking hit like a time slot switch, you're going to lose nearly 100,000 viewers like that. Or at least you could. And that's what happened. That's how you got to 287. You were already on that hill that was going downward. It's not like they were just doing fucking great numbers and business was so good for Rampage and then all of a sudden, bad TBS fucking knocked them off. TNT knocked them off of 10 o'clock on a Friday. That's not what happened. They were not doing their best business. They were doing their worst. The numbers were going down every single week and then they got the switch. So they took an even bigger hit. And now they're at 287. We used to laugh at this and make fun of it because we didn't think it was actually going to happen, right? We didn't think we'd see a wrestling show actually go in and pull 287,000 viewers, man, or dip into the 200s because that's literally Law & Order SVU numbers, Blue Bloods, right? Fucking uh, Grey's Anatomy or any show that's in reruns. That's like an hour-long drama. They can pull two to 300,000 viewers, right? And you can spend a lot less on those shows and get a lot more in advertisers probably, so, I mean, TBS, TNT, USA Network, nobody is going to keep you around if you're pulling two to 300,000 viewers consistently and they're paying you $50,000 to $100,000 per show because that's what these stations are doing. It's called a production fee on top of what they're already giving you to air your, your show. And then they reap the benefits with all the advertisements. That's how this goes, all the commercials. That's how business works in television. And when it's live events, the, the stations will give you extra money every single week as a production cost. 
So they don't. They can cut that every fucking year, every month, every week. They can cut that production cost and just throw on Law and Order SVU if you're pulling in 287 or even 375 like last week. That's why ratings matter. When everyone says, "Oh, ratings don't matter," I don't. I don't know why people even look at the ratings. Just, just enjoy wrestling. Well, because we don't want to be fucking shocked or dumbfounded when our favorite shows or a wrestling show totally gets canned and nobody knows why. No, we know why. We've seen for a while why Rampage should probably at this point just be taking off the air. 287. There's no doubt the NBA All-Star Weekend and being switched to 7 o'clock, there's no doubt that has an effect on the rating. Nobody is questioning that. But if you ask, how did you get to 287, it's not like they were pulling in 800,000 last week. No, let's not act like they weren't headed this way to begin with. They're not producing good television, not a good show, not enough good storylines, and a hell of a no on a fucking, on any larger than life characters right now. They have people that should be, they have storylines that should be riveting us and captivating us, but Tony Khan doesn't know how to book. That's the problem. And this isn't BC, this isn't the AMP unit, this isn't anybody just giving you our opinion. This fucking number of 287,000 is fucking atrocious. Not even the NBA lead in audio, or that as the fucking NBA lead in audio, not even they could help. You think people are going to tune in a little bit fucking early or see what's going on, right? It's slam dunk rampage. And I think this totally just shows the people that say, well, if it was on at 7 they'd be having a better show and better numbers than the 10 o'clock. I don't know if that's true. I think the show has to be better to be putting on better shows. Does that make sense? (laughs) Do the fucking work. That's where Tony has to start. I I, I, I never thought I'd actually see a big show uh, hit the 200s in the ratings. Um, If they go lower, then the, the company that everybody made fun of, Impact Wrestling, in the future... Impact Wrestling might just beat Rampage. Uh, I mean, if the local bingo hall down the block ran a fucking show on TV, they could probably beat that number. I don't know what what Rampage is even supposed to be. 287 with a .07 demo. I'm pretty sure that's not what the station was expecting. And Tony Khan has refused to change anything up. And some people like it. I get it. If you like it, that's great. You're you're part of the 287,000. <laughs> does it make it fucking good or does it make it the best that it can be? Does it mean that it cannot and should not be improved a thousand times over? More people should should want to feel like they need to watch this show than 287,000. So, and, and that's my point, you, you know, instead of changing this, Tony Khan instead says, we're in a war with WWE and our fans love it. Really? Because the, a lot of the, uh, the, the shit that I see is people saying, everybody stop talking about a war. Everybody stop comparing WWE to AEW. When the own owner of AEW is saying, no, the fans love it. They love us comparing. We're real competition, and WWE knows it. That's what Tony Khan said last week in several interviews. Calling himself real competition to Vince's WWE and saying they're in a real war right now. When you look at this Friday night number and you say, where's the fucking war? One show pulled in nearly 2.4 million viewers and the same fucking sh- in, in the same night, the other company pulled in 287,000 viewers. Uh, what is that? That one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's that's one ninth Nearly one-ninth of what SmackDown pulled in, and that's the fucking war? Really? And if and even if it wasn't a 7 o'clock slam dunk special, switch time slot. Let's say they were on at 10 o'clock. You were pulling in 375 last week, bro, and you were on a downward trajectory. So that tells us the ratings guys said that that show, no matter what, even if it was at the 10 o'clock slot, would be pulling in 350 tops. So 350, okay, so that's one, two, four, six. What do you got? Two, two on that, it would be seven. Four would be 14. Um, six would be 21. It's still one-seventh of the SmackDown audience, even if you were to be in your 10 o'clock slot with 350, and I'm being generous. So either way, you're heading toward, uh, uh, you're headed toward a, a decision that's going to have to be made to just take it off the air. 
Because if you're truly claiming that you're in a war with WWE and that you're real competition, this is not the evidence that you would want to go to. <laughs> you would want this off the fucking slate. Clean the slate. Get that fucking away and just concentrate on your AEW. Hope that that gets passed over nine again. Fuck a million. You ain't going to hit that. Okay? Unless you really keep saying you have announcements and you're bringing back old WWE talent, and then you'll, you might hit a million. Just try to get 900,000 and then at least you'll be one third. A little better than a third of SmackDown's audience. And you'd at least be almost, almost half of Raw's. Raw's doing one eights and one nine. So you're a little more than, Raw's a little bit more than, uh, better than one half. But at least you can like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know where this war, it's an imaginary war. It's an imaginary fucking competition with this guy. But he thinks, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how much it snows in Jacksonville. That's all I'm going to say, man. I'm going to leave it at that, man. Oh, we're jo we're having fun. Relax. <laughs> much love and respect. They amplified, man. Top guy, I'm out. We the ones. They all the twos. They know it. More importantly, we know it. We put up those fucking ones. BC, until next time, check you.